Hi champs, welcome back again to all of you in the another Sunday live session. So today I am excited to introduce our special guest, Dr. Anup Maharsha, who is a biochemistry engineer and a STEM mentor and a trainer, who has been working in this field of STEM education for several years. Not only this, she is a Kathak teacher, which is, which is a classical dance in the North and India. Today, ma'am will be sharing his knowledge on the topic of STEM and how it can be fun and engaging education. So in between, if you have any question, you can ask your question in the live chat without any hesitation. So thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us and looking mm -hmm. forward to hearing. Yeah, looking over forward. to you. Yeah, thank you. A warm welcome to all of you, and uh, I really hope this is going to be an exciting session. Uh, like Ankit said, you can ask questions, and uh, while I take you through this journey, I'm going to be using a lot of uh, examples to tell you how STEM is uh, really fun and engaging. Uh, to you know uh, uh, take your education or uh, your academic progression to the next level yeah can we have the next slide so essentially uh, this is a small tool which i'm working with and uh, it's called as the fold scope i hope you can see in the picture there's dr manu prakash and i'm holding here a paper folding microscope uh, which weighs only eight grams so uh, you know this is the excitement that i want to share with you that if you have a question in your mind if there's something that you want to know then this is your go-to tool. You know, this is something that you will have to uh, make your own slides, uh, ask your question. And believe me, uh, even as a teacher, many a times I may not have an answer, but that's where the help comes from. That's where we have a full scope community. So you can just take a picture. You can just uh, record your video and put it on the full scope community and ask them, what is it? And then somebody from Berkeley or Manu Prakash or myself or somebody in the big, huge, uh, you know, universe of scientific uh, contributors will tell you oh this is a rod for this is a diatom this is a this cell this is a bi cell and so on so i really hope that you love uh you know uh, being there on this journey with me yeah next slide okay so it's it's more about exploring uh you know the world around you so while i may think uh i can help you solve your problems that's not going to be essentially true so you stay in Nagaland, you stay in Calcutta, you stay in Bangalore. What is your niche? What is your surrounding is best known to you. So you will be able to explore your surroundings, know your problems, and then find a solution to it. Somebody else from outside will not be able to do that. So let's start on this exploratory journey using this tool. Yeah, go ahead. So what's my motivation to do this? As Ankit just said, uh, there are a lot of challenges I face. Uh, there are a lot of things that I do. I have a research degree and believe me, uh, at the end of it, at my age, you will realize that you don't do everything for money. You do for the joy of doing something. You do for the fun of it. You do for the learning. And believe me, I'm still not an MBA. MBA means I still don't know everything. So I'm also seeking many answers. Yeah. Over next slide. So that's uh, Dr. Manu Prakash for you. He's a professor at Stanford University and what began as, you know, uh, Jugaad, you can see, I hope you can see that little firki in his hand, uh, which can be actually used to do centrifuge, uh, you know, when you don't have high end equipment, when you don't have uh, medical equipment, when you don't have electricity in villages in underdeveloped countries. And then this Jugaad comes into action. And that's how this fold scope has been discovered. And uh, through this fold scope, yeah, next slide. 
So this is essentially costing uh, one dollar, as you can see. It's quite cheap. Uh, in India, you can get it anything between three thirty, uh, around three hundred, two fifty to five hundred rupees, depending on you know. Nobody goes and buys individual packs. I typically buy hundred or twenty, fifty packs. Uh, you know, so in one fold scope for, for example, for a school, for a college, for a class, for a science club, or uh, you know, for for any kind of activity that you want to do, and essentially. It's the handling of this full scope. I have been using these from 2018, and I have traveled pan India and I have you know kind of trained about more than 25,000 students. They must have touched this full scope, but still this full scope is absolutely intact. See, it has a blue side and it has a yellow side. So while we are going through, I will tell you more about it. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, I am indebted to uh, one of my funding agencies. Uh, which got me this project, uh, which was, uh, you know, kind of put forth by Department of Biotechnology. And there, of course, you can see one of our esteemed scientists. You know how you are fans of Shah Rukh Khan, uh, uh, Salman Khan, and these are your heroes. But these are my heroes. So I'm a fan of Dr. Vijay Raghavan, uh, Dr. Mashail Kar. And, you know, it's, it's good if you are in science. It's good if you are interested in science to know that, you know, these are the heroes. You must read their struggles. You must read their life stories. You must read what they discovered. So this is something that uh, was put forth by DBT. And this is a Ministry of Science and Technology project, which I was a recipient. And believe me, I was not alone. There were 500 more people with me. So what I'm presenting to you, to you today is just a very small glimpse of what we do together as a community. Yeah. Yes. So uh, while I was working in KC College, of course, I'm no longer working there. I'm an independent woman in STEM. While I was working there, I had got this uh, project and I aimed to, you know, magnify your curiosity. Any question, and I'll show you how uh, in my next few slides, you know, fourth graders, fifth standard children, second standard children, children who have never done science are, you know, exploring this and trying to understand what is there around me and answer questions. So essentially, I believe very strongly in this statement. Education is not the learning of facts. You know, exam ke pehle pura mug kar lo, and then suddenly during the uh, paper, you, you kind of puke it out. And then after the exam, when somebody asks you, do you remember this lesson? You say, I don't know. Okay. So education is essentially the learning of the facts, but it is the training of the mind to think. So supposing uh, when I show you in my next slide, uh, how, you know, we take this further, that is the time when you, uh, you will understand that when I do something, I don't have to buy heart aid that the centipede has so many feet. This is done like this because I'm doing it myself. So, you know, when I do it myself, I learn better. When I uh, when I observe, I understand it better. And then each one has their own language, whether it is their, uh, you know, uh, mother tongue or whether it's a uh, medium of instruction, which is English. And then you express it. Essentially, I hope you can see this is a mix of things what we are doing. We are collaborating. So, Ketet, me, our Twitter friends, uh, we are, uh, you know, helping society in problem solving. We are doing a lot of critical thinking so that after this session, you will have a lot of questions. You want to come back to me. You'll go back to Ankit and say that, look, we want this. We look for solutions together and more. Yeah. So, uh, uh, essentially, why this need, uh, you know, for us to go from uh, the classroom teaching to this kind of teaching and learning process? is I think you have to understand that the world is evolving very fast. Even your teachers are very troubled because they don't know if they're training you for jobs which exist after five years. So even teachers are wondering that we are learning that five years later, the child will not get a job on this So this is a struggle. So somewhere we have to change our teaching methodology and change it from a passive learning to active learning. I have done this, I understood it and I got better with my art. I'm not a science student, but do I have a right to question what is there on the leaf? So what am I doing to answer that question? So, you know, breaking barriers. I'm from arts. I'm from commerce. I'm from maths. No, you are a student in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, medicine. So we are all an audience in STEM or teachers in STEM or parents who are mentors for them. So somewhere there is a need for us to collaborate, break these barriers and go ahead. Yeah. Okay. And another important thing that I want you to remember, I love this slide of mine and I pitch it at all my talks is I hope you can see that when you're doing things, when you're creating things, when you're collaborating, you're communicating, the pandemic has taught us that you have to also be compassionate. You have to empathize with others. You have to understand their situation. Also, uh, you have floated with information around you. Which is that information which you can trust? So that is why you using your uh, media, using the technology around you very judiciously, 
what can be trusted therefore it can be forwarded or what is real news what is fake news so you should be able to distinguish this and of course flexibility you know uh, so uh, ankit may have been a student the moment you make him a event manager he's like oh i'm quite good at it because i did event management in class if i make him a leader and i say okay you're leading a, a group of people he'll say yes i'm a leader so typically developing these flexibility a leadership initiative productivity and social skills you know so uh, neither is ankit a youtuber nor that i am a youtuber but still how comfortable we are in using this medium so somewhere this constant evolution to strive and get better yeah okay so we'll start now and uh, exactly uh, what is uh, it that we are going to do so i'll start with uh, yeah can i have the next slide so essentially i uh, wanted to you know uh, uh, play a, a little video here uh, which uh, if ankit permits me i will just uh, uh, play that for you so that you can you know this one second yeah so essentially uh, you can see uh, there is a picture here so uh, maybe if i can't play my videos i will share the links with you where you can uh, see them yourself i hope uh, uh, any of you can you tell me what this looks like this is from one of my uh, post scope workshops in raipur and uh, i hope you can see that nasty little thing the claw the claw is so sharp here if you can see here and suddenly in the center you see a very transparent body and you can almost see a heart like structure over there well let me tell you this is the lice which was there in the hair of a small child and she came from a tribal school and you know while we were uh, just using this fold scope uh, i will tell you how to use it in a moment from now while we were using this she was holding this little thing in her hand and you know uh, because she came from a tribal school and i am not trained in the language she speaks i uh, could not understand what she was saying but she was telling me somewhere to observe this and then we took that on a glass slide uh, so this is how a glass slide looks like i'm sure you've all seen a glass slide if you can't use a glass slide aapke school mein glass slide nahi you can use a paper slide so you can just see i've taken a piece of paper i've cut out a hole here and i can just put a cello tape on one side put my sample on this put a cello tape on the other side using a cello tape and this becomes my slide right and then i will observe this in the fold scope and in the fold scope there is a blue side and a yellow side i hope you can see this a blue side and a yellow side so you have to always remember that the yellow side is always going towards light and the blue side is going towards your eye can you see that i can just put it on my eye look towards light and i will be able to observe what is there in this light so i can open up the fold scope i can put my slide here i hope you can see here i can put the slide here and there it gets clamped here yes you can definitely uh, share uh, uh, the uh, video link here bio patrika uh, it was a, a short video of about 3 minutes and here if you see in the picture you can actually see the heart of the lice and please note the claws and this is how uh, you know we got the school students to understand how important it is for them to put oil in their hair to wash their hair to wash their hands because from here all the louse uh, lice eggs go into your hair and please see the claws the way it clings on to your scalp and it takes in all your blood so if we can play the video whenever we get uh, uh, you know hold of it you will see how much all the blood all the food that you are eating is getting converted to the blood that gives you energy and all that energy is actually being taken away by the lice and the lice keep reproducing keep reproducing and produce more of lice and that is very very and you keep itching your scalp you know so that is why we had called it the itchy scalp story so i kept this picture here in particular for you to see while the lice look so small the uh, claws of the lice are even smaller but just see how sharp they are they hold on to your scalp and how in a suction kind of a movement the lice is taking all the blood from your scalp and it causes you to itch over and over you know a period of time now this is again because of bad hygiene but just to drive home in a very non communicative way where i couldn't understand her language and she couldn't understand my language and then the girl came back to me and she said how amma kahat hai you know like her mother would say to wash her hair to wash her hands and so on okay so just a very simple uh, procedure we did we did this workshop for about 3 hours 
and in those three hours we were able to make this uh, you know so many slides and so many videos and from there i just kept those two three pictures here so that in the center you can see the heart uh, when we show you the video you can actually see the heart pumping the blood and how much of your body blood is going into the lies and please note the claws and the sub claws and the uh, you know everything else the apertures which are helping the lies to uh, a very small uh, uh, you know uh, organism to actually cling on to your scalp yeah yeah uncle can we have the next okay so here you can see uh, this is a very typical picture of paramecium uh, uh, you know which is uh, carrying out conjugation now this is a textbook image okay next slide if you see uh, in my next slide here you will actually see that in the crevices of the debris that we have yeah uncle can we have yeah uh, uh in uh, there is a link down there if it can if you can click it it's fine otherwise i will just okay uh uncle give me a minute uh, let me just try uh, presenting my screen give me one second okay yeah so uh, i want you to uh, see this video i hope you are able to see this video here Can you see this video? Yes. Now you can see. No, there is no any screen is sharing. We are not able to. Yeah, just one second. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Can you see it now? Can you see it? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> So I'm just showing this again. Can you just see that motor-like movement at the mouth of that organism? Now, please remember, I don't know uh, what organism this is. Fine. So I take this state on waiting, and then many people will answer saying, uh, you know, this is organism A, or this is organism B, or this, this is organism C. Now, I want you to see this uh, uh, other video here. Can you see this? Can you see the ciliates moving? So I'm sharing another video here now, and I want you to see how. Yeah, can you just see? Can you see the ciliates moving there? So we just got some dirty water, and uh, I hope you can see those little. Yeah, yeah. Can you see them moving? These are ciliates, and while we were at Ajay and Ajay College in Delhi, we just got some dirty water. From the garden, we immediately put it on the glass slide. Very little, very little. Yeah. 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 We took the cover slip, and can you see those ciliates? Yeah. They're just moving. So that means in that dirty water, there could be diatoms, there could be amoeba, there could be protozoa, there could be so many organisms with bacteria. And this is one of them. Now, honestly, see, I don't know what organism they took. This was. Because they said boundary pay. We have boundary pay saluted. And I can post this on the community. This video. And this is an amateur video. I have just kept my phone yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and I have made the video. Okay, so I'm just uh, stopping that share. So I, this was just to give you a feel of how a fold scope is actually helping you to capture that. Okay. So uh, these were uh, uh, just to show you of you know how uh, we've been able to uh, capture these videos using a fold scope. So I'll now tell you more about how one goes about using the fold scope. Uh, what is it that it is uh, made up of in my next few slides and how we use it. By now, at least you're comfortable that you can, you know, uh, put this portion towards your eye, that portion towards the yellow portion towards light, and you can make your observations. This uh, I showed you is a paper slide. So many schools don't have funds. Uh, so getting a glass slide is very difficult for them. So they're just using paper slides. And easily, these paper slides can be discarded in a small pit or something where you can burn it without causing any kind of disturbance. 
Now, uh, the next slide here uh, that I have on view is actually a lot of bacteria. Uh, you know, you can actually see bacteria and spirochetes uh, that were there. Yeah, next slide. So this is how the fold scope looks like. It has a blue slide and a yellow side, which I showed you. And it is made up of uh, paper. And just to show you how it looks like. So this is how the paper is. This is how the paper is. It comes like, I'm sure you've all used jigsaw puzzles where you've got folded things. So you can flick out, you know, each piece from this. You can flick out each piece from here and then you can get it assembled. Okay. And there will be actually four pieces like this yellow one. And here also you can see the same blue things. Can you see the blue, blue things which are there in the front? Everything. So it comes folded like a paper like this in a pouch, which is a DIY kit. And it has magnetic couplers. Can you see magnetic couplers? So if I just leave it, it immediately goes and catches here. So what does that mean? That this is very simple. Supposing you folded it wrongly, then the magnet won't stick. And then you have to just open it. You have to just open it, open the paper. See, open the paper, change the orientation of the coupler and then stick it again. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a origami. It is actually an origami fold scope, uh, uh, you know, kind of a folding mechanism. And each time you fold it, you just need to kind of uh, press the sides so that it, the ends are sharpened and it's easy for you to use. Yeah. Can we go ahead to the next slide? So uh, many of you are going to ask me, uh, you know, uh, our schools or our labs have got those uh, other microscopes. Uh, let's let's understand. This is a portable microscope. Okay, this is for frugal science. Um, I have a question. My mom wants to know whether the potato peel, what is there on that onion peel, which is black in color? Yes. So I cannot get the microscope from my lab home. This is more for you. Any question you get and you answer it. The compound microscope is big. It's costly. Uh, it does give you a resolution. But believe me, the fold scope resolution is also almost at par with it. I, I hope you can see those two photos. I will show you more pictures. And I will show you. It's typically, please understand, while we can argue and have another lecture on this, it is the ease of use. Okay? That means the way I can take it in my purse, the way I can share it with children, the way I can sit for two, three hours doing nothing, uh, you know, just exploring, making slides, and so on. Yes. Next slide. Yeah, so this is how the kit looks like. And the kit has got a small diary, a pencil, coupler, small kind of, you know, paraphernalia, uh, paraphernalia which can, you know, help you uh, to make notes. You can write your name over it. And each fold scope, like you have your own identity card, it has a fold scope number. So supposing this is my fold scope, I can register it with my email ID and I can post all the pictures. And whenever I have a picture, which I don't know what it is, somebody will answer. So they know who I am. And they can also tell me, Are, this is a good sample. Keep it, take it to a lab, do this or do that. So this is like an identification of the fold scope, which actually helps us to, you know, uh, uh, help each other in the community, identify ourselves, collaborate better. Yeah. So uh, essentially, you can see it has a, it has the heart of the uh, microscope, uh, which has got the lens. Please understand, you know what happens in a magnifying glass? You magnify the image once, twice, three times. So this is going to be 140 times, 140x, okay? And uh, uh, once you assemble it, it weighs only 8 grams. Oh my God, it fell down. No, please don't worry. I can throw it from almost a 13-story building and nothing will happen to it. Now you'll wonder, oh, what happens if you dip it in water? So you can dip it in water about 13 times and the 14th time it will start getting disintegrated. But why would I put it in water? So this is a need for you to remember that whenever you make your glass slide, Whenever you make your paper slide, please see how much of the sample I have taken, a little portion of the cello tape. Always you need to dab it dry so that the fold scope does not get wet at all. And that will help you to use it for a very long time. Okay. Yeah. Next slide. Now, uh, these are, of course, images uh, which are from the fold scope side, but I will show you some real images. Now, you must be wondering, uh, sometimes, uh, Ankit, there is no light. Sometimes there is no sunlight. So please don't worry. You have a torch. So you can put five books on this side, five books on this side. Okay, put your torch in between and then aram say you can sit and make your observations. Okay, so you can put your mobile phone light also, but make a workstation because otherwise what will happen when you keep observing it like this, your neck may get strained. Yeah, next slide. So I hope you can see uh, this is a farmer and, uh, you know, there was something that was there uh, uh, on the uh, in the farm that looked like, you know, 
uh, something is growing on his uh, uh, crop and we made a slide and we showed him that look it is a bug and this needs some remediation and of course you can see there is a coupled uh, there's a coupled torch also over there but of course uh, the torch may be a little costly one but i for my school uh, you know workshops i use this torch and it's easy for me it hardly costs about 10 to 20 rupees but there are other couplers also uh, which can be used for torch yeah next for the source of light yeah okay yes that's the magic so i hope you can see that if i want to record a picture what do i do i just take my phone and what you can on my ips here yes i just place my phone there and when i place the phone there you know what happens it's a eureka what you could see with your eyes this aapki gardan dukh rahi thi aapko you couldn't hold it stably so now you have the torch down you have your phone scope and all you do is you put your phone on that now you can record a video you can record pictures you can take and you know you can keep making your observations plus i thought many of you will wonder whether the phone scope moves yes the phone scope moves it moves right to left and it moves left up and down which means that if i have a slide here if i have a slide here i can actually screen different fields on the slide different fields not just stuck matlab ki bas ek hi focus lagega aisa nahi hai i can see pure slide mein what is there on the entire field okay yeah go ahead okay next slide so if you when you're making samples you can take your normal glass slide you can take a paper slide or you can take a cavity slide but please remember the slide should not be wet you should always wipe it and why am i putting the cello tape on it why am i putting the cello tape because as soon as i put this phone scope to my eye what will happen the sample may fall out the cover slip may slide down so to keep that firmly in place i can use a cello tape but now ankit will ask me are but we don't have glass slide we don't have a cover slip in that case ankit you can just put a cello tape just plain simple cello tape and what happens is when you are using and seeing the view which you will see from my next few uh, pictures you will be able to see the cello tape gum air bubbles water gaps and the sample so this makes you a better uh, researcher a better person because you are able to identify artifacts from real samples yeah next slide so here we are collecting pollen and please remember collecting pollen or collecting samples you know what children do how to take a sample they will take sample like chutney sambar chole never to do that always take sample like the tip of the pencil you know how pointed it is when we sharpen it you pinch your neighbor they pointy hai ki nahi just like the tip so how much sample should be there very 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 little smash it up with your pencil we are all not working in labs smash it up with the uh, you know end of your uh, pencil smash it up the small piece of cello tape and your slide is ready next slide so here can you see uh, this is a very interesting way of collecting dust so i am saying are when the uh, winter comes the dust is very high and the dust has lot of pollen and uh, there could be microplastics also in it i want to check it so what to do oh my god i am not working at tifr can i do this kind of research yes you can do just keep small pieces of your uh, you know cello tape all the air will stick to it and in the air there will be microplastics pollen dust particles and so many other things and that cello tape you put it on your slide put it in the fold scope and make your observation so here you can see you are your own master you are creating your own experiment there is no defined protocol which also means that you are using what is there on the top deck which is your brain for this you don't have to be a topper you don't have to be intelligent you don't have to be smart you just have to ask the right questions ki can i try this shall i keep a glass slide and see shall i keep some uh, strips of cello tape on the window every day and see if there is any change yes that is the way to go ahead yeah next slide next slide so here i'm just showing you the different sources of light i hope you can see you can have a proper uh, you know uh, uh, something as costly which comes with the fold scope or you can have a torch or you can have different types of torches yeah please go ahead go ahead next 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 so now you can see this is uh, my collab see i just told you use two book sets keep your torch in between and start observing the uh, picture that you can see now is one old carton no you get so many things from amazon you buy so much stuff 
जस्ट मेक अ स्मॉल होल इन इट फिक्स योर टॉर्च दे दैट बिकम्स योर फोल्ड स्कोप का टेबल ऑन दैट यू कीप योर फोल्ड स्कोप एंड आफ्टर पुटिंग योर सैम्पल ऑफ डस्ट और लेट से यू वॉन्ट टू ऑब्जर्व अनियन सेल्स फ्रॉम पोटेटो सेल्स पोटेटो सेल्स फ्रॉम एप्पल सेल्स येस बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी एप्पल सेल्स इन पोटेटो सेल्स वॉट विल हैपन एप्पल हैज टू बी पील्ड विच मीन्स यू नो हाउ टू सिलेक्ट अ सैम्पल विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ रिसर्च मेथडोलॉजी ओके सो ह्यूर वॉट हैपन्स दिस इज द वे ऑफ वर्किंग वेर इन अ स्मॉल कार्टन वी हैव पुट अ स्मॉल होल put the torch there put my fold scope there and the phone on it yeah please go ahead so we can see some more pictures yeah this is two sets of textbooks uh, on both side with the torch in between and this is also another way of setting up your fold scope yeah please go ahead so i hope you can see those are cells and what is the advantage of using a phone if you have a good quality phone not a very high fi phone okay you can enlarge the cells you can enlarge the view of the cells you can see the boundary you can see the internal organelles and obviously that is like uh, you know when i see it i can believe yes the cell has many organelles and here i hope you can see the cells are different in shape but they are belonging to one tissue the cells are all connected to each other and we use the cell we use the term cam jam cell adhesion molecules the cells are not i am not talking to you you go there no cells are always communicating with each other so they have cell adhesion molecules that means they are always communicating with each other where they keep telling each other they keep sharing messages with each other and so through one slide you can learn so many things and that's why i really enjoyed uh, you know when ankit posed uh, that i should take a session with you so this is something so when you see onion cells when we just take onion so why do we use onion we just take a peel of onion put it on the slide put a uh, cello tape there now why did we start with onion because it is easy to take a peel of the onion put it here and observe next what we do we took a small pinch of potato small pinch you don't want to make bhajiya so take a very small pinch of potato smash it up fully and that solid part what you have just remove it let the sap be here let just air dry it put the cello tape and see the cells you know what you will see you will see nice rounded cells of different shapes now this will tell you that while potato and onion both have cells the onion cells are more organized like a brick one second third fourth fifth potato cells are always roaming are of different sizes and that is why you will see potatoes are also of different shapes and sizes okay yeah please can we see the next slides yeah next slide this is another setup where you can put your torch down and work with comfort yes now this is one of my uh, yeah just the earlier slide if you can see here uh, uh, to my audience this is a fourth standard child he doesn't speak english and uh, comes from a you know a little different background but i want you to see that he has taken he asked me teacher ye face ka hair aur eyebrow hair same hai kya i said mujhe nahi pata i don't know right i don't know i really don't know so what he did he plucked out one hair put it on the slide put cover slip uh, uh cello tape and he did that with the eyebrow hair and you know what he came back telling me teacher ye wale baal mein kala kala jyada hai now see he doesn't know melanin he doesn't know pigment so i told him acha aap mujhe draw karke batao observation table draw your observation i want you to see that observation there he has drawn one round he has drawn two lines and he has left it light he has not colored it dark i have another picture also but i have not put it here but just see without giving you any information when you start asking the right questions when you think that is the way of going forward now in this slide if you can see in the rounded picture on the side you can see a lot of the cello tape gum but this is to tell you that you can easily identify your black sample versus your cello tape gum okay this is an amazing slide made by fourth graders i did not give them a protocol chart take a slide pull your hair put a cover slip no no defined protocol was given they just came back to me with questions and we said okay let's explore but each time they came to me with a question i said you have to draw and show it to me so what i want you to see there in that observation that he's drawn it's not even a perfect circle it is just to say that this art of observation is what we are born with you don't have to be super intelligent you don't have to be a topper you have to just be able to express which should also tell you some people express by drawing some people by talking by singing which makes all of us very different so what one person can do another person cannot do and therefore many of you may be good at science but you may be very good with drawing your answers may not be good 
many people will be very good with the diagram but unable to write so look for the skill that you are nurturing that you have and optimize it so that observation is so nice it almost feels as if a 12th grader or a first year graduate student has made it by saying black hair okay so nicely he has made a round field he has made the hair there and in the other field of the eyebrow hair he had colored it thick black so this should tell you we did not discuss pigment or melanin but somewhere as an observation he understood ki isme color thoda kam hai aur isme color thoda zyada hai okay so a very uh, uh, something that he will never forget and plus most importantly he didn't have to buy hard anything ki isme color kam hota hai isme color kam hota hai ye aisa hai ya waisa hai you know so he didn't have to buy hard anything so in a very fun and happy go loving way about 3 to 4 hours we made amazing slides now what could you do in making slides take a pink flower take a yellow flower take a purple flower and take a white flower and then you will see the white color has got white packets pink flower has got pink packets and that will tell you oh the color is pink because it has pink pigment or pink pigment in a packet and that will tell you that yes as you grow older teacher will tell you these are not packets they are called as plastids yes and the green color plastids are chloroplast so like that we you know take it from a very basic level without making it you know uh, very complicated by giving them complex words or jargon we just allow them to evolve and learn on the go yeah next slide so this is a mixed group of uh, this was a small village called safale and uh, here i had a little challenge uh, uh, you know i had uh, children from balwadi to 12th standard and i also had 13th standard children who were commerce students so they said hum log kya karenge what will we do we are commerce students so what will we find out what will we learn and believe me they made amazing slides and i hope you can see in the setup uh, because it was you know a uh, uh, not a pakka construction in the uh, roof there was a small hole where the sunlight was doing a peekaboo so we were all you know looking through that uh, sunlight and we were able to make our observations yeah next slide yeah next slide so that is dr tulsi chala that was dr dipti yeah next slide i'll just try and show you more pictures of poland and uh, this is again in uh, uh, yeah you can go ahead yeah please go ahead so i hope you can see the fold scope is there uh, there are small uh, uh, you know petri plates in which samples are collected and uh, this is in an orphanage in odisha uh, it was it is called as the adruta children's home and i did six workshops there because they had six centers one for the boys one for the girls one in bhubaneswar one in puri uh now uh, i hope you can understand motte odia asuchi but uh, conveying uh, uh, science or conveying fold scope in odia was not easy but believe me uh, that is how it is you know i was able to reach out to them they made slides and here there was a girl called pallavi and she said motte chheppo dekhi dekhi baro achi i want to see what's in my saliva and uh, uh, this was pre covid time so i allowed her to make the slide and in the saliva we could see you know moving spirochetes so many bacteria and believe me that day she became famous because we kept telling her pallavira chepo pallavira chepo you know we made we took pictures of it we made videos out of it but see a very simple thing that can i see my saliva what all is there in the saliva okay and everybody got interested and i hope you can see the room it's a room but it has got very bright lights and that light we are using as our source of light yeah okay could you go on to the next slide yeah can you help me identify this so we typically do this in our 11th standard 12th standard 8th standard uh, science classes uh, where we put some nail polish on the leaf and then we take out a small uh, pinch and then we observe the stomata well here i have just taken the leaf and i have just pulled out a small uh, layer out of it i put it here on the slide put it on the cover slip and you can observe this can you see so many stomata you can almost see uh i want to know whether the stomata changes in summer or winter i don't know take the same plant take the leaf take a peel out of it and observe so here i did try some staining also this was just a very small experiment to see if the color got enhanced but even without staining and staining the result is quite good okay and you can clearly see those small grains of rice that you can see are actually the stomata and that's how a very simple preparation again this was made i think by eighth graders uh without any protocol all these uh, workshops that i do don't have a protocol they they you know on the go whatever questions come we keep making the slides yeah next slide yeah so here in the center you can see one stomata without any staining properly there are two guard cells which are there and there are many others also there so here you can see 
uh, the first one looks like a textbook image and this one looks like a very naive one because obviously leaves are different and each time you can actually magnify your image so the image gets better and better and that's the advantage of using your mobile phone on it yeah yes so can you see these are school girls so the principal called me can you do a workshop and the important point here is uh, i'm sure you all know of our uh, uh, esteemed uh, president uh, 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 murmu madam and uh, uh, Doc, um, uh, shrimati uh, you know uh, draupadi murmu ma'am and this is her school in bhuvaneshwar school number 2 and uh, this is the school where we did our workshop and i hope you can see within the class no lab is there how to do the experiment what to do so we made uh, uh, can you see that uh, those are the pollen of uh, hibiscus and very nicely the girls are standing on the grill window and observing with the fold scope and while they were uh, observing itself we kept our camera here and we took the pictures so this is one of my treasured uh, pictures i can say very proudly that i have uh, been to the president school and uh, very amazing uh, school very amazing uh, lady that we have in her you must read more about her to know how she has come up and uh, become you know holds the highest office in our country i hope you can see in one slide the pollen are looking like dots and in the other slide the pollen are looking a little big now this is the magic of magnification can you see i have actually magnified the image while i am focusing while i am focusing okay so then that helps me take a better picture i can almost see what we are taught in the textbook the outer cover is rough the inner covering is soft it has spiky things and more okay so this is just to tell you how we keep uh, you know learn from our own observation yeah go ahead next slide yes can you see this so this was a small insect again at andc but the insect itself was uh, i will tell you one tenth of the of the mosquito okay that means the insect was very small but even that small insect one appendage can you see the brush like structure that is there that means how much of pollen it must be carrying what is the uh, you know level of organization of appendages in insects now i am not from zoology i am not from botany i am a, a biochemist molecular biologist but how you can see the way it is organized so without the person having to buy heart and believe me see the quality of the picture any random phone we have taken we have taken a picture but this is almost as close to as a textbook image okay <coughs> so this will help you tell you how these uh, you know how the uh, appendage is organized what are the different elements in it how it is structured how this could prove as an irritant how they could harbor many germs and so on yeah next slide yes uh, this is in bal bhavan in delhi uh, here again can you see uh, those are uh, on 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 the left side the bigger picture is that of uh, uh, you know the leaf cells again you can see the stomata and i hope you can see the big cells with the boundary very nice transparent boundary and up there is the pollen and on the pollen i hope you can see there is the spiky outer covering okay and that spiky outer covering will you know this uh, six standard girl will always remember she will not have to buy heart it and she will always remember that yes uh, you know this is the way uh, your uh, uh, pollen looks like ankit if you give, give me one minute i will just put on the charger just give me one minute. yeah so i hope you can see uh, that essentially uh, again this is in bal bhavan so there was no formal training we got all these public school children to come uh, to bal bhavan and bal bhavan facilitated this uh, session and these girls you know humko uh, almost 6 baj gaye the and they didn't want to go back home ki nahi will make more slides i want to see more images i want to make more uh, content so here i hope you can see the clarity of the picture the the round one where you can almost see the pollen is round it has an outer covering and inner side the outer covering has got a specific shape and so on yeah so i i really hope uh, that uh, you know this is a uh, uh, very clear yeah can we go on to the next slide Yes can you see now once not all of them will make good slides or great slides so one person what he has done he has taken the full pollen sack and put it there i have purposely retained this slide but that's okay now this will tell you what happens when we are doing uh, you know this workshop for 3 4 hours so the child will make one slide and i tell him are very good go back and you know get better so what he will do he will go back take the pencil back smash it up more remove the solid particles and then come back each time he will get better with his art so can you see the full pollen sack he has mounted and when i asked him what is wrong with this slide he said madam the full pollen sack is here so i said go back and then change and i hope you can see later that he has come back with a slide where the pollen are very very clear nice 
yellow uh, pollen, but there again a bunch of it. And I tell them that this is a good slide. But would you want to see a crowd or do you want to see one one pollen in individual capacity? And that's when they, you know, will go back and make more slides. Yeah, the next slide. Okay, I have already showed you the ciliates video. This was the ciliates video which I showed you. Uh, yeah, can we go on to the next one? Yeah, so I hope you can see these children. Uh, I particularly wanted to share this uh, picture with you. Uh, so they spoke uh, their tribal language and I spoke Hindi or English, right? But believe me, I hope you can see uh, the, 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 you know, the kind of video that I have made out of this, the kind of pictures they've taken. I'll show you in a very, uh, small, you know, uh, in a few, in a while from now, if I can share the link with Ankit, the kind of uh, work they did. So language is not a barrier. Asking the right questions is what you know actually defines you as an individual. So these were all the children. Uh, we were like, you know, trying to break the barrier of talking to them. And of course, NH Goel School in Raipur had facilitated this session. So I always, you know, thank these, uh, uh, you know, in between people who kind of help uh, do the hand holding. That can you do this? Can you, uh, you know, also take these children? And uh, you can see uh, what a wonderful uh, session we've had. Yeah. Next slide. So this is the picture that I showed you of the claw of the uh, uh, lice. Next slide. Yeah, next slide. Yes, next slide. Yeah, so here if you see these small dots that are there, the blue dots, these are bacteria in the Pani Puri water. So now don't stop eating Pani Puri, but always go to a vendor who washes his hands, keeps uh, his hands clean, and maintains good hygiene. So this was a small project. And you know, every, every time I discuss this project, everybody tells me, ma'am, don't discuss this project. We like to eat puchka. And you are saying this, okay? It's not about uh, the puchka being bad. It's about the hygiene of the person who is serving it to you, okay? So just ensure that they clean their hands. They are wearing gloves because, you know, they put their entire hand uh, inside the water. But uh, this is something that we had uh, uh, an amazing discovery. And we found that the Pani Puri water had a large amount of bacteria. Now see, just by looking at the bacteria, again, we cannot say whether they are good bacteria or bad bacteria. But when you give a project to students, they will at least know that between normal water and Pani Puri water, yes, there was a difference in the bacterial load. That means the number of bacteria that were there, which will get them to think what is going wrong, which will then get them to answer, oh, I think it is the hygiene. Oh, I think it is the bacteria on the hand which are getting added every time you are having the puchka. But please, this is not to uh, tell you that don't have puchka, but just ensure that the handler has maintaining a clean hygiene. Yeah, next slide. Yes, so many people think that only biology can be done using a microscope. No, here I, I have shown you dicalcium phosphate and uh, you can see a uh, 50 uh, kg bag was labeled as dicalcium phosphate, but it is actually packed with calcite powder. Yes. That means this is some amount of, you know, uh, uh, some amount of uh, what you say cheating that you are selling dicalcium phosphate, but you have added calcite powder to this, which means you are saving around 2,500 to up to 3,000 rupees, which is wrong. So that means even crystal structures, based on the crystal structure, you can identify which chemical this is, what is happening. So supposing I take some copper sulfate, powder it. Now again, Ankit is going to tell me, ma'am, again, how to powder it. Take a filter paper or a piece of paper. Put your copper sulfate in this. Take a pencil. Roll, 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 roll. What will happen? The powder will become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. With a small uh, tip, just take some of it and put it here. Put a cover slip and put a cello tape. Observe it. Now you know what you must do. Take a dropper with little water and put it at the side of the cover slip. Now what will happen? Observe this under the microscope again. And you will see how the copper sulfate is getting dissolved. And this is going to be magic to your eyes. So you will be able to see the crystalline structure. You can do that with salt. You can do that with sugar. You can do that with the turmeric powder. You can do that with, you know, black pepper powder. Just see how it looks, how it, uh, you know, how it appears. And you can look for, uh, you know, adulteration. So you can take some dry papaya seeds, make a powder, observe them. You can take some black pepper, make a powder, observe them. And when you see the distinction, you're going to say, oh, there is a difference between the two. This is papaya and it is not black pepper but it is sold off as black pepper so this was one example which i thought i must share with you there are many more examples but just to break this barrier that science is not about physics chemistry biology science is about asking a question and getting an answer yeah next slide 
Yes, what can you see here? So this is from a workshop in Pasighat. And this was done by the physics department. So physics students said, ma'am, what should we observe? So we said, okay, let's observe fibers. So you know what fibers we observed? On the tissue paper, on the butter paper, on jute, in cotton, uh, in your wet wipes. So we observed, tried and observed different fibers. What was their composition? What was their folding? What was their thickness like? Can you see? On the side, I even have a micrometer slide, which I can use to say what is the thickness of the fiber, right? So uh, not that a physicist can't use it. And by the way, did I mention Dr. Manu Prakash himself is a physicist. So please understand, have a very open frame of mind. Uh, there is no compartment like that. Only for the ease of managing your school, your college or university, we say botany department, zoology, physics. Otherwise, all of it is science and we observe, write our answers and that takes us ahead. Yeah, next slide. Yes, can you see these leaves? Many a times we walk in the forest, we walk in gardens, we see these, uh, you know, wilted leaves. Can you see there is some white powder on it? Yes, and when you stain it with lactophenol blue, this is again in Pasighat. Uh, Pasighat is the upper Siang in Arunachal Pradesh, a beautiful place. It has the Siang River. And if you've seen the river Ganga, uh, then you can see Siang River is about 10 times or, uh, you know, 20 times more than Ganges. So it's huge. And while the water flows, there are currents in the water. So it's an amazing uh, biodiversity hotspot. And that white thing on the leaf is what we have mounted. Can you see nice XY forms? So now that means there is something growing like a fungus on these leaves and that has got completely the leaf to get wilted. Yeah. Next slide. Yes. Can you see leaves on which there is some disease? So you can see that the entire leaf has been eaten up. It has been gobbled up. All the green portion is gone. Right. That means the leaf is diseased. Many times it cannot be seen by the naked eye and therefore you need a full scope or a microscope version to it. Yes. So this is Ganoderma and uh, uh, this is like a, a dry piece that we have and we just tapped it and we have some of its spores there and uh, you know we got to see how it is. So uh, while you're doing uh, observing uh, uh, things near a river in a jungle, you can just carry your fold scope with you, make your slides, take pictures, come back and put your records and you know have your project report or whatever ready and also it will help you grow as an individual that is the flora and fauna around this water body different from that water body or on the same water body within five kilometers does it change does uh, you know uh, the, the kind of infections that happen on a leaf number of stomata the amount of dust on the leaf so many questions you can pursue and find out the answer like you remember what i started with what happens around you is what you know best and only you can help yourself to find the answers. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. I've already showed you this video from Tulsi ma'am. So next, next. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Yeah. I think we've almost put these through. Next one. Yes. This is again uh, on the top. You can see uh, there was one hair bulb and uh, uh, the earlier picture. And, uh, you know, while... Uh, this was again uh, on the other side you can see grass from grass we had got you know those different uh i, I think this must be their uh, uh what do you say like how we have pollen so these must be uh, something that we found on the grass and different grasses had different kinds of arrangements and this was one of the pictures that i maintained like i said we usually post this on the community and somebody tells us what type of cells are honestly i don't know it all okay so this is just to kind of uh give you an idea that uh uh, that's how a community helps us get better. Yeah. If you can just go through the next two, three slides. So I'll just tell you where to stop. Yeah. Go ahead. Please. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 So uh, this again, uh, you know, is a, a full scope view. And you can see this is a rot fur. And you can actually see the rot fur, uh, you know, coming out, moving, trying to gobble up its food. And all the processes which you see in your textbook in a diagram is what the video will show you okay so i will definitely uh, uh share these videos with uh, uh ankit and maybe whenever we meet next or uh, he can share it with you yeah next slides yeah there is a magnetic coupler uh which can be used again to stick your uh, phone to uh, the uh, eyepiece here but it's not necessary even without that you can just put it like this and you'll be able to make an observation next slide yeah, so I hope you can see how the coupler looks like. All of them are these black couplers. 
I have one here, okay? And there's one over there you can see. Yeah, next one. Yeah, you can also use it for image projection. Can you see in a dark room? So I can actually use my phone to project what is there inside here on a dark wall. So you can almost use it through a, like a projector. So instead of supposing I'm doing some community work and I'm working in a municipal school or a government school, children will not have phone there. So using my phone to show many people, I can do a projection there. But it needs a little dark surroundings. But otherwise, you can actually do that for using it as a projector. Yeah, next one. Yeah, next one. So uh, you can see here on the community, we keep posting. So I did this workshop. I immediately put my pictures. I got this. So immediately, as soon as you put it up there, somebody will respond to you. And you can see this is a very structured way of responding. Not that as if. Uh, and by the way, people don't post in English. People post in Bangla. People post in Tamil. People post in Telugu. Uh, so, you know, they're always looking for translators who can translate that and get back to them. So that, you know, they can, they are able to communicate and establish this rapport with the a person who's you usually call them fold scoper and you know help the group or the team to grow and answer their questions yeah next slide yeah that's a uh, uh, that's my team uh, uh, not these but the names there many of them are my collaborators uh, i have a co mentor in dr anand sharma who is in uh, based in london i have dr sagarika damle and i have dr tulsi chala uh, you know, Dr. Dinesh Khedkar, Dr. Mosmi. So all over India, these are collaborators where we work. We work together. We do the workshops together. Workshops may we have students ranging from 10 to about 150. So imagine two people doing the fold scopes. And believe me, there is uh, December, I did a fold, uh, workshop in Kongu College. And we had 110 uh, participants. And, you know, we worked there from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Nobody wanted to go home. Nobody made noise. Uh, the teacher was not shouting, keep quiet, keep quiet and things like that because everybody was so busy making their slides, making the fold scope, folding it and so on. Yeah. Can we go on to the next slide? Yeah. So that's uh, him. Uh, that's his dream. So that in every uh, textbook, uh, we, you know, once uh, the science textbook should have a fold scope so that children, whether they are in villages, whether they're in cities, are able to fold it and answer the questions around them. And definitely it's not something for you to do science. It's something for you to ask questions and, uh, you know, get better at seeking answers, at bettering your own art of, uh, you know, posing the right kind of questions. So uh, that's uh, how basic science is an investment in long time future. Uh, without obvious short term gain, we invest in the human capital and workforce capacity by training. What this essentially means is not that you will follow what I'm trying to tell you. But because you are making your own observations, you are asking the right questions, you will become a better person. You will know exactly how to seek your answers. You will be able to pose the right uh, kind of questions and that will help you evolve as an individual and therefore us as a nation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, just run through it. Yeah, I just kept many uh, copies of it so that I... Yeah. So I am always ready. Uh, just this last slide, I copied that from... Uh, uh, NH Goel uh, uh, school uh, that was the principal. I'm always ready to risk. I'm always ready to learn. I'm always ready to test my strength. I accept everything that brought me to this place. I am open to criticism and I intend to grow. So that has been uh, my motto. Uh, thank you very much for this lovely interaction. And uh, the next, of course, is a picture with all my collaborators. Uh, these are esteemed scientists. And I want, to, I want you to see uh, the person there in a bow. He's Dr. Amjad Husseini, who is studied at Oxford and who is a very famous researcher in Kashmir. He works on saffron. He works on saffron. And believe me, amazing work he does. Uh, so, I, you know, I want to tell you that it's not about who I am, but I am because they are. OK, so that's Dr. Dinesh Khedkar. Uh, there's Dr. Rekha Mugavar. There, there's Dr. Mudang Omo. Uh, you know, all my uh, Dr. PM Singh, Mosmi Saikia. With these names, I think you can understand this is a pan-India nice team of people who are waiting out there uh, to know, you know, interact with you and uh, help you to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Just can you go ahead for the next? Next. Yeah. So uh, powered by uh, coffee and mitochondria. That's me. Uh, uh, and they're on Facebook, on Twitter, and on LinkedIn. And I share a lot of these slides. Uh, wherever you see, you won't see my photo. You will see only the activities done by the children because I think uh, now is the time to understand more so that we, you know, fear less 
and that's that's exactly what i think uh, you know these interactions or these kind of communities help us get better with it so keep calm and do science ask questions keep exploring the world around you and uh, go as far as you can see and when you get there you will be able to see further okay don't start seeing from here there when you reach there then see what is further do what you can with what you have where you are and find joy in the journey thank you very much i think that will be my last slide okay so thank you so much ma'am for your lovely presentation and your time and your effort so uh, okay. many time you used the word uh, okay so many time you used the word pollen right so can yeah, you pollen. tell me about that more what the mean of pollen i don't know um so uh, ankit uh, pollen is actually a uh, you know uh, in the flower you have uh, the, the the female reproductive organ and the male uh, you know both the male and the female uh, reproductive organs are there so the male reproductive organ produces the pollen and the pollen actually will go and sit uh, you know either self pollination or cross pollination and the pollen will fuse with the uh, egg to form the zygote you know which typically happens uh, so what the fruit that we eat is nothing but the matured ovary so what fruit we are eating right. is that is actually the pollen which has fertilized the uh, the egg cell and when they merge they form a diploid zygote and then that divides 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 and then you have different fruits so essentially when you're eating a mango you're eating a chiku you're eating an apple you're actually eating the ovary of the plant or that particular uh, species okay so uh, that is why pollen is a small uh, uh, i would say a uh, you know cell a reproductive cell that is produced which is produced in large numbers so you know butterflies will have pollen stick to its uh, feet bees will have pollen stick to its feet so when they go from one flower to another they will pollinate they will help you know reach the pollen to another flower from there or even when birds when they fly from one place to another they help in what is called as a process of pollination that means reaching out the pollen from one flower or from one uh, you know uh, component to another mm -hmm. so that's like in and and that way you have in a, a particular uh, a uh, flower you will have the male and the female reproductive organs and the male reproductive organ actually produces this pollen so there is a pollen tube a pollen sac and that pollen sac is filled with thousands of pollen so you can call them pollen grain pollen i hope i have been able to answer your question yeah, yeah thank you so last i uh, saw a tweet of workshop be tweeted by the manu prakash and parayat so uh, prem sevak sir was also there yeah yeah prem sevak sir was there yeah so can you tell us about that talk show uh come again a little bit can you just uh, can the last tweet i saw on the twitter you created by the manu prakash okay so uh, usually uh, right. when uh, uh, manu prakash either comes to india or whenever uh, you know they, they're hosting these uh, workshops so essentially what we do is we get uh, you know to fold uh, uh, these fold scopes first and then we get children to uh, just explore ask questions make their slides uh put staining uh, and observe like for example if you were to observe potato with stain and without stain okay and uh, you know that will kind of tell you what happens if it is let's say potato and i use iodine then it will stain the potato cells bluish purple pink which means it is actually staining the starch in the potato cells okay so uh, uh prem sir i think is from uh, dayalbag institute if i'm not wrong and he's the one who has sent me uh, 500 uh, fold scopes which have been routed from stanford so uh, for all my workshops i always share a research credit with him and he facilitates uh, these workshops that if there's a researcher who's doing uh, some outreach uh, or carrying out these workshops or if there's some school who wants so they you know typically they help and connect each other saying that oh one of my is free can you do this workshop can you take these four scopes there so that's how we have you know like a network and uh, my four scopes yes have come from uh, uh, prem sir i think is based somewhere uh, the albag institute if i'm not wrong in agra yeah, okay. uh because uh, that's so uh, and these are typical uh, these uh, you know they are collaborators uh, they collaborate uh, and how on how we can uh, better uh, the you know outreach outreach matlab hum kitni dur tak is message ko pahuncha pate hain how uh, far how fast uh, you know we can get the fold scopes to people who are using it people who want uh, to conduct these workshops in schools and usually when i go to a school and i conduct these workshops ankit so let's say we folded 50 fold scopes so then i leave those 50 fold scopes with them so then you know what happens the school can keep taking that uh, 
वो जो एक्टिविटी है उसको स्कूल और आगे ले जा सकता है और आगे ले जा सकते हैं नहीं तो क्या होता है पहले मेरे पास सिर्फ छब्बीस फोर्ड स्कोप थे आई हैडी ट्वेंटी सिक्स सो आई स्टू टेक दिस फोर्ड स्कोप एंड गेट दम बैक बिकॉज आई कूडेंट लीव इट राइट आई डेंट हैव एनी now that uh, i got these 500 fold scopes i am able to leave these fold scopes so what happens no it's not a one stop shop that you came once and you finished it so then the school also keeps encouraging more research projects they keep sending you pics they keep telling you oh we observed this cell we observed that cell this is the picture they keep posting it on the fold scope community and thus the community you know gets more and more and it the community grows yeah so thank you so much ma'am and there is more to learn from you thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you so chance if you want more session like this then don't forget to the subscribe button bye see you in the next session